Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, I'm back with part two of the Second Punic War by Oversimplified. Part one brought us to the crossing of the Alps by Hannibal. By the way, do you think that was a good decision at that time? But it's time to see the Carthaginians lay waste to the Romans. All right, the original video link is down below. Make sure you watch that before you come over and get my commentary. And let's get started. By the way, I hope I don't forget. I was told there's like a, a scene where someone's like, it's like in the bathroom and somebody's like dunking somebody and somebody told me to look at like writing on the wall or something. I don't know. They said like it's, it's it'd be hard to miss, but like don't don't let it like don't go past it. So hopefully I, I see that in here and we can see what's what I was warned about or whatever. This so video was made possible by Incogni. Use code oversimplified Incogni? in the link below for an exclusive 60% Incognito off browser Incogni plan. Also <laughs> Make sure to grab our Roman Dude, those console are cool. YouTube before it's too late. YouTube. Don't make me mention it a third time. Or I feel like it'll get stolen in my classroom. Though. Hopefully not. Hannibal's All right, part army two. had survived its famous Hannibal's in Alps, northern Italy, and he was now in Italy. With Hannibal's arrival, the Roman consul they didn't call it Italy back then. The ground the running in typical Roman fashion, he marched his army straight at the enemy. And Hannibal began preparing for his first combat with Rome on Italian soil. Before the battle, Hannibal wanted to inspire his men, so he staged a gladiatorial death match between <laughs> captured Celt prisoners, with the winner getting prizes and freedom. He then explained, All right. The How far will you go? How much money or prize money would it take for you to do a gladiator battle to the death? How much would it take you? Put it down below. Whole thing was a Me? metaphor. A metaphor. I can't put a price on what? Think. You. These warriors are you. American You're gladiators. Italy with no escape. Your only choice now is to fight and win. What about the dead guy? That's you if you don't win. And the prizes? That's what you stand to gain by winning. And the fact that I've soiled myself in all this. <laughs> no, that's not part of the metaphor. Okay. Hannibal also <laughs> smashed in the head of a goat. Again, for always sacrificing goats, man. Scipio, animals. On the other hand, now arriving in the area, opted for the more classic route of a rousing pre-battle speech. Look at them, men. Weak. Starved by the Alps. While we are the strongest military in the world. This will be easy. Like 10,000 horse-sized ducks fighting a baby-sized baby. <laughs> It'll be like Mike Tyson in his prime. Kicking a Mike baby. Tyson. A tug of war between 10 sumo wrestlers and a... Help me out here, Ralph. A baby, sir? Yes. Yes, that's it. A baby. <laughs> what a the point speech. Is, there is absolutely no possible way we could lose a battle this easy. So, if everybody's ready, on my mark... <gasps> They're done. Dude, the Carthaginians did really well at first. Yeah. The battle of Tacinus was this was almost as soon as it had begun. It was like an upset. The Romans found themselves completely outmatched by Hannibal's famed lightning fast Numidian cavalry, a key element in Hannibal's devastating double horses. element tactics. In the chaos, Scipio was wounded. Thankfully, Romans did not see this coming. Writers, his handsome 17-year-old son, Scipio the Younger, saw his father <laughs> fall. Scipio the Younger supposedly saved his father and in the process earned himself a lot of daddy's kisses. The Romans ended Sorry up about fleeing the, the area, destroying the bridge behind them as they went for a nation. He doesn't understand how important, just think about it, how important bridges are. Like, rivers are huge. Like, how important that is to cross a river. That's why, you know, historically, you know, rivers make such good borders because of what it takes to get across. Romans were expert engineers. We know about Caesar and stuff. Like, he was so good at being able to put a huge, because, like, in, in Europe, there's huge rivers, right? And be able to throw them up. The Roman engineers would throw up a bridge in, like, a three days that could be half mile long or something. It was incredible and key to success. So overtly confident in victory, believing Hannibal to be an easy. Hey, they didn't have gunpowder. Romans found themselves running away with their tail. Was it any get out of China? <laughs> it was humiliating. Yeah. And you know who thought so as well? 
The Celts, they began <laughs> flocking to Hannibal's side, just oh. as he had hoped. Even Celtic so maybe the whole fighting? thing, because I was kind of criticizing the um, uh, the Carthaginians for not trying harder to get the Celts on their side, but it kind of would be like the Celts, maybe like a suicide mission. It's like, if we help you, like we've already been dealing with the Romans and it hasn't been going very well. Like we don't want to get on their bad side, but now with like some success, they're like, hey, maybe we can stick it to the Romans for once. Thing for Rome in the Roman camp began to reconsider. Man, I'm thinking we should try to join Hannibal. I hear you. Maybe we should bring him a gift. What do you think he'd like? Hmm. Oh, I know. Hey, Hannibal. We want to join your side, and we brought you a present. A gift? For me? I hope it's Roman heads. Oh, please. Oh, please be Roman heads. Hey! How did you know? Yeah. Running away from Hannibal Weird. was humiliating <laughs> enough, but having dozens of Romans beheaded in the night... Now that's beheading. Everyone beheads everybody. Tychinus had been a relatively small dead. battle, but the psychological impact it had. Early I guess that is that's was true. huge. I mean, like the Mongols, they used to make stacks of them outside of villages to warn off people, just to intimidate people. Stacks of skulls, men, women, children, just brutal. So I guess I answered my own question. It's psychological warfare. It's only just a taste of what Hannibal was capable of. Despite the shocking initial loss, however, Rome still didn't seem to fully understand the danger posed by the monster now loose. Rome, in their Rome's territory. never had to deal with the Senate fighting on their own front this excuses. way. It's those traitorous Celts. That's why we lost. Yeah, and it was a cavalry battle. Wait until Hannibal faces our almighty legions, and our consul was bold. Once he faces our other <laughs> fully follicled consul, then he'll really longest. pee his pants. <laughs> that other consul, Longus, had been Some in ancient the ancient Propecia. Preparing to invade Africa, he had seen some success, even capturing Malta. But then he heard the news. H Hannibal's in Italy? And I'm being ordered home? But, but I was going to be the big boy. I was going to invade Carthage and win the war. Well, you can be a big boy at home. No! Does somebody need a nap, sir? No! 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 <laughs> so Longus brought his army on the, the teddy long journey perfect. north. When he arrived in the area to decisively neutralize Hannibal, the two consuls yeah, joined stop forces it here. together, creating a double consular army. But the two consuls weren't exactly on the same page. I was going to say that consuls often, so consuls are the highest political position um, in the the Roman uh, Roman Republic. And, uh, yeah, like executives, basically. And uh, a lot of Roman history has included consuls going after each other. Um, and, you know, because it's a very powerful position. So, yeah. Having a nice rest there, old man. I'm wounded long. So personally uh, ambitious. You don't people. understand. He's more dangerous than we thought. Maybe for you. Whoops. Listen, we can't just march straight at him like we normally do. We need to train our men through the winter. And we'll try again in spring. Sorry. I don't take advice from a bowling ball. Hey, hey! I'll kick your ass <laughs> longest. Any day now. I'm coming! Just you wait. Oh, Scipio, you feeble old man. Scipio was apparently quite cautious after his recent encounter with Hannibal, while Longus, typically Roman, couldn't <laughs> wait to give Hannibal a swirly. Okay, I was told to to check this out. Hold on, hold on. Hannibal, while Longus, typically Roman, couldn't wait. Okay, so someone said the dunking I was at, I was supposed to look at. Okay, someone's butt was here. Banksy. Average height for the time for Romans. No. No. Mr. Terry wears nice hats? I'm in an oversimplified video? What? Why would I, I always wear hats in videos? This is the, the common one since day one is my my OG. No way. I got a shout out in an oversimplified video. Oh my gosh. Oh. I love you guys. You guys are so um that's kind of emotional, I'll be honest. Um, that means a lot to me. Like my channel started 
as a reaction, you know, it was supposed to be at first, it was supposed to be a channel where I, I just post lessons like for my students. And I've done that. And if they can, then it was oversimplified that I started doing, uh, I thought it would be a, a cool idea to do a reaction video. Like, cause I'd never done that before. And it was oversimplified that I did my earliest, <laughs> my earliest content with, and, uh, and it, it went viral immediately. And I owe so much to them um, for making a format that worked so well for me with that. And with my channel and, um, and, uh, this channel is, you know, taken off and, uh, it's changed my life. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. All right. What's the rest here? Your mom asks for new videos, so I'm taking her to prom. Fart jokes forever. <laughs> Thank you. To give Hannibal a swirly. So who would get their way? Well, when two All right. consuls joined Let's get back forces, to some fun here. it turned out the Romans had an interesting system in place. They would each take turns being the one in charge. Consul 1 would lead one day, then Consul 2 the next. Back and forth, back and forth. As you can imagine, when the two consuls didn't agree, things didn't go so well. In this case, due to Scipio's injury, Longus probably assumed even more command than normal. <laughs> Hannibal had Celtic spies in the Sorry. Roman camp. He fully understood the Roman system and Longus's hot-headed nature, and he knew he could exploit it. For goodness sake! What's wrong, sir? I'm trying to order some pizza. But I keep getting fed all these personalized ads about being a hothead. <laughs> I'm not a hothead, am I? No, sir. Look at this. Butt insurance? Who would buy <laughs> butt insurance? Yeah, that sounds really stupid. Sir, it seems like a lot of data <laughs> brokers guy. have collected data on us. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really <laughs> stupid. Sir, it seems like a lot of data brokers have collected data on you. They could sell that data to Hannibal. What? But don't worry, because you can get rid of that data with today's wonderful sponsor, <laughs> Incogni. All right. Hooray! <laughs> I've been getting at you for some time to want to make sure they get their ad out online. But you're so far again, the uh, Romans you are. Um, did you? Typical. Surprised by this, they're fighting in their own land. And data brokers have. It really is amazing that um, the the um, third parties like advertisers or insurance companies without you even knowing. Ever right. wonder that where the uh, from the butt insurance the Carthaginians name, are number, have made this track number, and favorite color from and lost probably a huge percentage of their broker. army right we under Hannibal's you know, amazing leadership the hundreds there. Hundreds of brokers that have our data and politely ask them like, to delete. This is it. not something anybody would have expected. About right with years. Carthage, and that's why you need so Cogni. I was we got to find out what went wrong. What went wrong? Eventually, it's going to. But all I have you know, one thing I would think about is, um, are give them permission to work on my behalf, um, then sit back. And are they going to be able to get reinforcements? That seems like that would be and something very difficult. Don't stop to get would be to get those reinforcements to keep my data so with an annual plan. So if you we'll see what happens with that, your personal so. data too, Go that's to what I'm going to be looking at. Com slash oversimplified to get an exclusive 60% off an annual incogni plan. That's incogni.com slash oversimplified. And as always, you'll be supporting my channel. <laughs> so thank you. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Roman heads, a double consular army, and a hothead. Hannibal needed to keep smashing the Romans in battle in order to maintain the loyalty of the Celts. And so he was eager to fight another <gasps> battle. The combined Roman force possibly outnumbered him, so he carefully crafted a clever trap, and he made sure to spring it while Longus was still in charge. The plan began with his army <laughs> getting an early night's Winter sleep. Switch and stuff. All right, boys, time for lights out. <laughs> Sorry, but we got a big day ahead of us. Tomorrow, we're gonna massacre the Romans. Yeah! Good night, boys. Dream I don't understand. Face. One thing I, I've ever thought about on. this. Send out 
the cavalry. Oops. Um, ever thought of this? But uh, there's no way I would be able to sleep if I was a soldier. There's no way. Like sleeping, like getting sleep before a battle. Like, is that even possible? How could you do that? You know what I mean? You ever thought of that? Oh, wow. That night, Hannibal's Numidian cavalry made their way over to the Roman camp, arriving just before dawn. <laughs> hey, Romans, wakey, wakey. What, what the? What's going on? <laughs> hey, Longus, your butt smells like a butt. It does not. <laughs> Got him. Scipio, awaken the troops. Longus, these playground insults are clearly meant to lure you out. Well, it's working. Send out the troops. Longus, it's clearly a trap. And I'm falling for it. Send out the troops. Hey, guys. Wake up. You're heading out for battle. What? But we haven't had breakfast. We're skipping breakfast! I don't think you can do that. As the Romans <laughs> hurried out of camp, the Numidians began luring them back to the Carthaginian. No time. Camp, where? The Grab a granola bar on the way out. We're just awakening from their slumber. Uh, Eat up, Early boys. bird gets the... We're having pancakes. Dagger. Ooh. While the Carthaginians yeah, were enjoying their hearty breakfast, the starving Romans were still on their way. Hurry up! We have to catch those Numidians. Hey, why have you stopped marching? Longus, there's a freezing river in front of us. Well, get your gluteus maximus in the water! There's that one big butt guy. <laughs> All right, boys. Time to lather up. This oil will <laughs> insulate you from the cold. It also smells like lavender. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> there's the Carthaginian camp. Get ready to Think fight. about how stinky people were in, like, in ancient times. Just like so disgusting. Disgusting. They they would mask themselves with flowers and stuff, but like, and and it, you know, to what effect it really happened. But I guess it's all relative, right? I'm sure maybe people in the future will think that we today are stinky. <laughs> Men, sir, I think the water from the river. They're gonna have hypothermia. Ice over. I can't move. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You thought war would be fun? Sitting around a nice hot campfire playing truth or dare with your friends? Welcome to the real world. Truth. Who do you like? <laughs> look at him. Like Sharon. Ew! Hey, look, guys. The Romans are here. <laughs> Having perfectly prepared prepare for, for war. So that his enemy was cold, tired, and hungry, while his men were well rested. And what are the numbers, oil. though? When the two sides engaged one <laughs> another, the Romans You're were be very in no slippery. condition to fight. And the cherry on top? The previous night, Hannibal had sent out an elite force of men led by his brother to go and hide behind a bush. They suddenly sprung out, encircling the exhausted Romans, who were then cut to pieces. Once again, Hannibal's superior cavalry and double envelopment tactics had flummoxed the Romans. But the key word at Trebia was control. Hannibal used his intel on the enemy and the environment of the battlefield to carefully control the conditions of battle, creating lots of little advantages for himself mm. that paved the way to success. And concealing troops for an ambush? All of these things... Really was a brilliant Hannibal, general, wasn't he? Genius. He's remembered as today. As for Longus... Not the resources of the Romans, the ...with a small number of troops. Disgraced. He didn't want the Senate to find out what had happened, and he began obscuring communications back to Rome. Longus, How? where have you been? We've been looking for you. Uh, nowhere in particular. Longus, 30,000 men are missing. Do you know where they are? Uh, they're taking a bath. 30,000 men? All in a bath? Yes. Longus, what's under that rug? Aurora Borealis? <laughs> Aurora Borealis? Uh, in... Oh, in well, your kitchen over. at this Good time of year bye trebia had been a distinct hands for the romans and okay, hold on, let me yeah because i was asking earlier about numbers bye trebia had been a disaster for okay so the romans okay so pretty much even strength killed or captured oh my god look at that five thousand said uh almost all of hannibal's elephants succumbed to cold soon after this battle oh feel bad for them but the 20k, the 30k, that's most of them. Damn. For the Romans. And as even more Celts began flocking to Hannibal, Rome largely lost its control. He's getting his, uh, his al allies. In Rome, complacency turned to alarm. <gasps> Hannibal had outwitted them on their own soil and inflicted a costly defeat. But with that, Scipio and Longus's terms as consul were over. 
they were replaced with two new consuls, Servilius and Flaminius. The Romans may now have begun to realize the trouble they were in and the genius Hannibal had shown in invading Italy. The Romans had expected to be the ones controlling this war. Remember, was they genius. thought they were going to invade Carthage. Now their plans lay in ruins, and they were levying 11 new legions to deal with the threat. Hannibal had completely redefined the war. But Hannibal had a little problem of his own. Things had gone well so far. Okay. The Celts were notoriously fickle, and Hannibal <laughs> needed to ensure he maintained their alliance and his base of support in Italy. Do you Any trust him? He captured fighting for Rome. He treated extremely well and allowed them to return to their homes. But the longer he hung around in their territory, eating all their food and leaving beard trimmings in their sinks, the more resentful <laughs> they may become. They wanted to go south and plunder some Roman booty. And Hannibal also hoped to sway Rome's other Italian allies in the south. What's the holdup? Side. So from here, the path was clear. Hannibal had to move south. Just one problem. There were two main routes Hannibal could take to move south. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly where the two new Roman consuls had taken fortified positions. If Hannibal tried to move on them, he'd be fighting from a disadvantaged position and could be bottled in. There is a third option. Ooh. Now the Apennines, by the way, are, are you know, the, the, the mountain range that runs through the, really the heart of uh, Italy are nothing like the Alps. Nothing like the Alps. You know, they're, you know, nice hills and stuff like that. But something to keep in mind. Tell me, tell me. We could move through this vast, impassable marshland flooded with dirty, season-infested water that at times would come near today's to Florence. But there's no way we would attempt that, right? That'd be crazy, right? Hannibal? Hannibal's four-day trek yeah. across the Arno marshlands was hell on earth. Almost as crazy as when he crossed the Alps. Imagine three full days unable to sit or lie down because there's nowhere to sit or lie down. Meaning four full days without sleep, slugging through heavy mud. You contract cholera, your foot falls off, and Jim Bob <laughs> directly in front of you won't stop pooping in your path. In fact, everybody's pooping in your path. Some delirious sleepless men would see clumps of mud and say, man, I could just sink into that. And then they would. When pack animals died, it gave nearby men a chance to rest, but only for a few moments before they were whipped back into line. Why? Even Ugh. Hannibal himself couldn't escape the torture of it. Hey, Hannibal, if we see a Starbucks, can we stop? <laughs> I need to take a leak. We got pink eye? Someone fart on his pillow? What? Jeez, Hannibal, looks like you picked up a nasty eye infection. Normally for this sort of thing, we just wash it out with some clean water. But as you we can don't see, have any. <laughs> water everywhere, but it's full of Jim Bob's poop. <laughs> no worries, Doc. I'll just take care of it myself. Oh. Did he? Wait, I didn't know this. That'll be $3,000. When the now possibly one eye removed his eye, what a army bat. emerged from the swamp, they were didn't shattered. Know he did that. But he had just managed to slip 50,000 men. Dude, right Hannibal is freaking, he is, dude, he's the goat. Dude, Hannibal is the goat. Did they make U2s, uh, the, the figures of Hannibal? I want a freaking Hannibal one. The Romans I didn't know he did rich that. Etrurian lands where he could replenish his supplies. Beautiful countryside there, though, if you've ever traveled to crazy, securing Rome Very fertile, too. Food. As fields and villages went up in flames, one Roman consul couldn't help but notice the hot-headed Flaminius, feeling it was his responsibility to protect <gasps> these lands, rather than waiting for his co-consul to the bread basket of immediately left Italian peninsula. to go chase Hannibal. Now, this Flaminius was an interesting character. He was what the Romans called a new man. He came from the lower plebeian classes of Roman society, and as a result... That's crazy, because patricians... Um... Plebeians could not be, could not do that. That that's not. It was it was patricians were nobles. Um, they inherited their positions. You can plebeians like couldn't really become patricians that way. I guess I mean maybe you could find a way, but not normally. That's not how that works. So the plebs, that's your common folk. Most people are, are plebeians. Um, but yeah, interesting. Salt. He reportedly had kind of a screw you attitude to the. We see outliers like in this, big like in history, you know. Ship on his shoulder. Picture Sid Vicious wearing a toga. That's Sex Pistols. Flaminius. Go. And Hannibal, <laughs> thanks to his spies, knew everything. Just as with Longus, Hannibal knew Flaminius was just the kind of man he could lure into a trap. 
Hannibal led Flaminius to the entrance of a narrow pass along the north shore of Lake Trasimene. Flaminius watched as Hannibal's army entered the pass. I've done it. I've spotted the enemy. Uh, sir? That big follow us sign seems kind of like they're trying to lure you in. Yes, Gareth, and I'm taking the bait. Sir, this really seems like a trap. Yes, Gareth, and I'm falling for it. They like <laughs> so for now, the Romans set up camp. The two armies encamped across the lake from one another, and night fell over the two camps. In the morning, Flaminius would catch up to Hannibal, and he would be the hero of Rome. For now, the Romans got nice and comfy in their beds. Aww. Good night, Flaminius. Good night, <laughs> Hope Rome. Poster. Good evening, Hannibal. Oh, we got night During vision. The night, Time traveler. Total stealth. As tens of thousands of troops. Dude, the goat. Dude, he's the goat. Scaled the wooded hills above the pass. Completely undetected by Rome scouts. Mm -hmm. Ready by dawn. Let's go, girls. Flaminius <laughs> took off across the lake shore to try to catch Hannibal. As he did, even the weather seemed to be on Hannibal's side. A thick fog rose from the surface of the lake, obscuring visibility. Look at Ooh, this. Fog. This is perfect. The mist will obscure Literal fog of war. Hannibal will never see me coming. Blink! Sir? Why does it sound like 50,000 Carthaginians are charging Blank and down the hill towards time. us? You mean 50,000 Carthaginians are charging right into my trap? <laughs> the Romans <laughs> found themselves completely hemmed on all sides. With zero visibility in the fog, the fighting was terrifying and chaotic. Troops were pushed into the lake in their heavy armor where Any they were either cut fire? down or drowned. And Flaminius, who likely stood out like a sore thumb in his consul attire, caught the attention of one Celt warrior. Oh, with his the snipe. Head possibly swirling with thoughts of how the Romans had decimated his homeland. Yeah. According snipe to the ancient writers, javelin. this Celt took his chance. Let's go! Oh. <laughs> In the three hour long massacre, 15,000 Romans Trashy were killed names. and an equal number captured. And in the entire look at those again. 30,000 to 2,000 oh. army completely wiped out Carthage. with their consul. During the battle, the Romans need some respect. had managed to break through at the front name, and man. climbed the hill above the fog. When the mist cleared, what they saw was a blood red lake and a sea Perfect. of Roman Execution. bodies. Ooh. Worse yet, when the other consuls sent cavalry to try to aid Flaminius's doomed legions, they too were caught and defeated. A double disaster. <laughs> Rome went into a frenzy. For the second time, Hannibal had completely decimated an entire Roman army. Romans were dying by the tens of thousands. Common citizens began flocking to the city for safety. Women waited by the city gates in tears, hoping to hear news of loved ones. This one man, having just led his battered army across the Alps the previous year, now stood less than a hundred miles from Rome. To this point, he had been a problem. Now, Hannibal. What do you think Roman, think Roman citizens? You know they're they're you know they're hearing about this. What they're starting to do? They're starting to prep. You wonder if people are fleeing the cities at all. Because they see this is happening, and it looks like nothing's stopping them. So, was a crisis. Uh oh. So I was wondering where crisis, specifically where it all Rome goes wrong. Took desperate measures. They actually had a system in place when two dealing consoles. with an emergency of this magnitude. Dictator. They would forgo their two consul power system. Dictator time. And instead, temporarily give one man near total power and. It was in their constitution to, be to as have decisive this decisive as he needed, and hopefully salvage the situation. This all-powerful position in Rome's government had a name, dictator. It's actually where we get the word. Yeah. But it didn't have the negative connotation. Like today, when you think about dictator, it it looks it's you know very bad. Um, kind of like in Greece, there was the tyrant, 
which didn't necessarily have that negative connotation. But yeah, it was supposed to be a position that um, had temporary executive powers. And it actually, you know, a lot of people know that Julius Caesar was a dictator, but um, and took and, and exploited it, obviously. But there were actually many instances, multiple instances before Caesar of the whole dictator thing actually working out quite well, where somebody comes into power, fix the problem, and then quietly kind of go away. Uh, Cincinnatus is, is one of those. You can look into him. But unlike modern dictators, Roman ones didn't score perfect rounds of golf <laughs> or ride bears through the Siberian tundra. Oh, they held power for just six months before they were required to give it up. And in Rome's hour of need, the man chosen to be dictator in 217 BC, one of the most highly esteemed members of the Roman Senate, Fabius Maximus. So how would Fabius, as dictator, confront Hannibal? Well, Fabius understood that marching all of Rome's young men oh straight into a one-man meat grinder was bleeding Rome dry. Hannibal was clearly too dangerous to face head-on in battle. However, he was also stuck in their territory with dwindling manpower and forced to live off the land. It wasn't a sustainable position to be in long term, and he could only remain there for so long. Mr. Beast so, Burger. <laughs> if Rome avoided battle with Hannibal, Does Mr. Beast have like any more crippling restaurants or something? Now? And instead, simply maneuvered around him, blocking supplies and taking out smaller contingents where possible, Hannibal would gradually no. become weaker. While they <laughs> is it weird that I'm like rooting? I'm rooting for Hannibal. I'm worth rooting the Carthaginians. Like Carthaginians, I have no say in this fight. I have no connection to the Carthaginians or Romans. But like, found myself rooting for him and Carthage this whole time. Maybe it's the underdog story that we all love. Julie becomes stronger, and oh, so man. Fabius presented his new idea to the Roman Senate. Okay, guys, I have an idea. See if you can follow me here. Okay. Instead of fighting Hannibal when he approaches, we run. Away. <laughs> Fabius's strategy couldn't have been any. That's not what you want to hear from Roman. your dictator. Romans were meant to march headfirst into battle, not run away from it. But it for not cowardly, room and retreat Fabius was extremely unpopular. At this city's point, right there. Hannibal was continuing south. He had to stay on the move to keep his army fed, and he was still aiming to undermine Rome's alliances in the south. Oh, they're going to go there first went, before the city, the capital. Of aggression, he devastated the Roman countryside and killed many Romans, all in plain sight of Fabius and his army. We're just going to stand here? Yes. Are you a coward? No. But Fabius, that's my farm. Well, McDonald, thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> McDonald. You're a hero now. Think of the stories He's you all tell. McDonald. Old MacDonald had a farm. <laughs> E.I. Do it, do it. Shut e. up. But you e. know, I want to go. E.I. Hated e. I. Oh. strategy. Hannibal. He understood the danger he was in. Turning Rome's allies against her required Hannibal to keep smashing the Romans in battle. He couldn't do that if Fabius wouldn't fight him. Multiple times, Hannibal tried to goad Fabius into a fight, but Fabius wouldn't bite. Failing that, he tried to turn Rome against Fabius. According to the writer Livy, he burned down all the farms he could, but any farm he learned was owned by Fabius himself. He left well alone. Hey Fabius, why isn't he burning down your farm? You got some sort of a secret deal with him? What? Of course not! So freaking hey, corrupt. Hannibal! What? Burn my farm too, please! What? Burn my farm too, please! No! Remember our secret deal! Probably wants probably gets the food, right? Does he get the food? Well you gotta admit, he's a genius. Hannibal's problem, however, he probably he the deal is probably to get the food. The move to keep supplying his army from the local I'm burn down At one point, food. he entered Campania, one of the richest regions of Italy. Great for resupply, and great for showing up Fabius in front of Rome's South Italian allies. But he was caught in a valley. And Fabius quickly moved to block his escapes. <laughs> We've got Man, such good research After in this video. By all way. the valley's supplies, he'll starve. Uh, As sir, always. What are all those lights leaving the valley? Is he trying to escape? Lights in plain view. Well, that's a trap if I've ever seen one. And we're falling for <laughs> <Suspecting> <laughs> trap, keep falling for Fabius it. refused Come on, to budge, but other Romans in the valley rushed Romans. to confront Hannibal. Only to find the Carthaginian army was actually just a herd of oxen with torches tied to their heads. They then found themselves caught in an ambush with the Romans. Oh my gosh. 
that is so big brain, 4D chess move, five head. Oh my God. You put torches on your, your cattle and then each torch looks like it could be two people. Dude. Oh my gosh. Dude, like oh, warfare used to be so much more strategic. Now it's just blow it up with some crazy artillery. But like, this is the stuff in like ancient history that's so cool because like it was necessary and it was actually useful. Distracted, Hannibal's army was able to slip away into the night unopposed. Classic Hannibal. For all his inaction, goat, the baby. dissatisfied Romans mockingly Freaking dubbed goat. him Fabius the Delayer. But the thing is, Fabius' strategy was probably the best thing he could have done. He was right that constant encounters with Hannibal were bleeding Rome dry, and the time he took allowed Rome some breathing room to recover their forces when they desperately needed to, while putting Hannibal into an increasingly more difficult position. Modern historians view Fabius' strategy as generally a good idea. To this day, the act of not engaging an enemy, but instead gradually wearing them down, is still referred to as the Fabian strategy. Hmm. But when Fabius' okay. term finally came to an end, the Senate couldn't have been happier. It was time to start fighting again. <laughs> it's like I didn't do However, that much. they probably had a little chat about how they were going to go about it. See, Hannibal's tactics up until now had been very sneaky. Yeah, it's all if you're guerrilla really, warfare, you might even though they're not dishonorable. on the homeland. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Every time we try to... That's how, I mean, that's how you have to beat, like, the Romans. The Romans are in... The Romans are masters of traditional warfare, right? Like, their phalanxes and get on open battlefields. Like, this is the stuff you have to do. It's amazing. Again, they're doing guerrilla tactics, and it's not even their homeland. But I totally get it, right? Screw honor in that time. You do what it is it takes to, to win, right? Isn't that what happens? <laughs> this guy down. We march straight at him. But then, oh no, Hannibal's hiding in a bush. Hannibal's got 30,000 men up a tree. At this point, up I'm a tree. not convinced my wife isn't just Hannibal wearing a disguise. <laughs> <Cooey>. <laughs> Look, this time we obviously have to switch something up. Now granted, we're Roman, so we're gonna march straight at him without thinking. That can't be helped. It's in our blood. But I have a proposition. This time, when we march straight at him, we do it with a massive army. I'm talking like 80,000 men. All right. It won't matter what kind of shenanigans he pulls. He can hide in all the bushes he wants. There's no way he can possibly overwhelm him with numbers. 80,000 men. <laughs> Grow up. You know what I mean? And so it was. With two new consuls, Rome put together a massive army. The biggest Rome had ever fielded to put Hannibal away wow. once and for all. To gather the men so required, two-thirds of them ended up being completely inexperienced. Wow. But how much experience? That's that's crazy because Rome had like the largest standing army in the world. And um to need even more recruits. I mean that that means this is this is huge. Take to be expendable war fodder. As this massive army set out in the summer of 216 BC, the Romans knew they needed to win this battle. Just one victory over Hannibal would likely be enough to end his entire campaign. And this time, their overwhelming manpower gave them confidence they could do it. Hannibal had taken mm -hmm. position at the town of Cannae, where he had captured an important Roman supply depot. With Fabius, I've heard of this one. Hannibal this is the battle was likely coming. Pretty sure this is a pivotal battle here. on his terms. But when his men looked out at the Roman camp, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. That army's huge. So biggest fight anyone's no ever we seen. can possibly beat off all these men. How are we gonna beat off all of these men? <laughs> you know what I mean. I think he's right, Hannibal. Hannibal is then said to. Oh, he's gonna drop it. That's what she's going My friend, don't worry. There may be a lot of them. But amongst their ranks, there's not a single man named Gisco. This joke was apparently so funny that his officers began to laugh and laugh. And when his men in the camp heard the laughter, they were like, hey. Oh, laughing. no. I guess that means we're going to win the battle. <laughs> Yippee! As for the Romans, the consuls were another pairing between an inexperienced hothead and a wise scholar. Although... The main historian from this era Polybius. was good friends with Paulus's family, so take that with a grain of salt. 
yeah. on his day of command. Back then, I mean, history was so biased. Like you're starting to get out of the bias with like like with the the Greeks before this with the like Herodotus and Thucydides, but um, yeah, they did their research and stuff at battles, but bias was was huge. That was inflated numbers. Stuff the rash as an example. and hasty Varro, despite the apparent pleas from Polis, sent the army out for battle. And when Hannibal saw this, he did the same. And here comes the single largest battle of the Second Punic War and one of the most renowned battles in history, yeah, I the infamous Battle Can of Cannae. In all the pre-battle maneuvering, Hannibal was able to ensure his army was fighting from the south. The one I remember this by name. The seasonal okay. dust-carrying winds were to his back and blowing directly into the faces of the Romans. Like oh. I said, control. After two years in Italy, Hannibal's infantry had dwindled to about 40,000. The Romans possibly outnumbered him two to one. Their army was so big it's that not their good though to fight him toe to toe. Far deeper than they normally would. The Romans planned to charge Hannibal's thin, weak line like a battering ram and break it. Have fun being they the also front. chose a narrow battlefield in the hopes it would prevent Hannibal's far superior cavalry from being able to outmaneuver them. Kind of sound, kind of sounds a little bit like Thermopylae, right? Uh, like 300 and stuff like that, because you know the the way you have to fight a larger army is to narrow them down so that um, the the toe to toe numbers are different. So common tactic. They here. wanted an honorable but battle. <laughs> It didn't go so well for the uh, uh, the Greeks, though, so... Where pure strength, rather than trickery, would decide the outcome. If Hannibal had his say, however, trickery might end up having a lot to do with it. He ordered his line to position themselves as an outward bulge, with his weakest troops at the very center. <laughs> just behind Why would they even do out that? Out of sight from the roof. Here's a lot about that stuff. Like, who's like... Like, did nobody, like... Like, like when you're okay, you're the front end, you're gonna die. Like, obviously, like, who's like down with that? Like, who's gonna be like, no, nah, actually, I'm not, I don't actually want to do that. I'm not gonna do that. Like, how big of a deal is that? Was the history Stood the elite? Why would you accept that role? Waiting for their moment to strike, unless you're just the crazy. Battle commenced as the massive Roman troops smashed into the Carthaginian center. The shape of Hannibal's just line a ensured the overwhelming weight of the Romans hit his weakest troops first, and they were pushed back. Hannibal's outward bulge reversed inward, with the Romans being like the Battle of the Bulge in World War II. Center, Hannibal had positioned himself at the center to encourage the troops to hold out as long as possible against the He's Roman onslaught. Because while the Romans were unleashing carnage on the center, Hannibal's cavalry needed time to do their job. Gotta get the, the heavy cavalry on the left, after a barbaric fight, sent the Roman horse packing with the consul Polis, even sustaining a severe head injury. Yeah. He managed to the move into it. the center to keep the yeah, battle that's big. going. That's big. Then the heavy cavalry turned and approached Varro's cavalry from behind. At the first sight of the coming Carthaginian envelopment, Varro ordered his horsemen to flee the battlefield. The Carthaginians had won the cavalry battle. But back in the center, according to some accounts, Hannibal's line did eventually end up caving this is where the, the Roman numbers are. weight of the Romans, and they began to flee. The Romans pushed deeper, and organization within the army likely broke down as they became a giant mass trying to massacre the fleeing Carthaginians. They didn't realize that they were playing right into Hannibal's hands. At that moment, Hannibal's elite units, having done no fighting yet, and therefore fresh as a daisy, turned and smashed into the Roman sides. Many of these troops were wearing Roman helmets and armor they had picked up after previous battles, Ooh. and the confused Romans may not have even realized they were the enemy. I mean, because in so many ways, that's... Have you ever wondered about, um, like, friendly fire, ancient battles? That was such a huge characteristic of um, of trying to, you know, in the madness of hand to hand combat of trying to know who is who is what you're wearing. Right. That's why, like, even up to, say, World War One, <laughs> um, where, you know, it was it was better to have something bright and identifiable to wear. Um, that was that was better, like, because, you know, you could see who you're fighting and obviously not get friendly fire, but. 
It was brilliant. Just more freaking brilliance, man. As Hannibal managed to regain the composure of his center and encourage them so back impressive. into the fight, the Carthaginian cavalry swooped in from behind. Whoop. And look at what lies before you. Oh, a military general's me. wet dream. The total huh. encirclement Slaughter. of a much larger force by a much smaller force. The Romans were trapped. Hannibal had unbelievably managed to use their wow. own superiority in numbers goat, against them. Rather than simply encircling them, he had actually allowed them to use their own immense power and push themselves into an encircled position. So if their the Roman cavalry would have stood their the ground, it wouldn't have happened. Of can I. Really, it's props to and the cavalry. With that, the annihilation began. For hours, oh the Carthaginians God. slaughtered the helpless Romans from all sides. The terrified Romans were so tightly packed no that surrenders. Times, they couldn't even lift their arms to defend themselves. The killing went on so long that the Carthaginians became exhausted from the non-stop massacre. And by the time the killed so much came to an end, the exhausted. grim toll spoke for itself. Should it be like 80,000? Several thousand more lost, than that? The Romans suffered Wait. 60 to oh, 80,000 dead or captured. Oh. Yet another entire army wiped out oh. by Hannibal. Many high-ranking Romans met their end. Dude. 8,000 versus 60 to 80k when they were outnumbered so much. Almost twice. Dude, we got to respect. We need to respect the Carthaginians, man. Like, we know what happens later, but like... <sighs> 80,000 dead or captured. Yet another entire army wiped out by Hannibal. Many high-ranking Romans met their end at Cannae. Polis, for one, Rip. but also 80 senators and more. It's been estimated that 20% of Rome's male population aged 18 to 50 died at Cannae. This Wait, what? Was a, a, it's been estimated that 20% of Rome's male population aged 18 to 50 died at Cannae. What the 20% of Rome? Not just the military, Rome? 18 to 50? That's a fifth. A fifth of the population of Rome was killed in one battle. That is insane. Like, that's crap I, like, think of in World War One or, or World War Two. like, percentage of, you know, Russians died at the hands of the German invasion and counterattack. Like, oh, my gosh. I had no idea there was anything this, it was this impactful. I knew about Cannae, but, but, like, oh, my God. Died at Cannae. Oh, this was it. Hannibal's vengeance. <gasps> The stunned Carthaginians, as they searched for their own survivors among the dead, couldn't believe the sight of it. An estimated 30,000 gallons of blood now lay spilled on the battlefield. Trying to think of, like, how do Rome's equate Rome's defeat that? at Cannae sent shockwaves throughout Italy. Just as Hannibal had hoped, most of southern Italy now defected to his side, oh including the second largest city on the peninsula dude everyone's wow. just white flagging it just whoop. well we, <laughs> we'll join you now <laughs> we'll join you now hannibal this is incredible what could possibly come next next jim bob i've killed a hundred and fifty thousand romans i've turned her allies against her that's it that's vengeance so let me tell you what comes next rome surrenders their territories are reduced we recover our lost islands and carthage dominates the mediterranean once again but sir what if they don't surrender jim bob did you miss what just happened <laughs> of course they're gonna surrender Throughout his campaign, Hannibal had shown himself to be very adept at reading the Roman mind. But if he now thought that Rome might surrender, it was the first time he severely underestimated them. And he was about oh, to first discover mistake. an extremely inconvenient fact about Rome. Rome never surrenders.
at a rogue survivor's to. camp near Cannae. One young officer overheard some troops discussing how they would flee Rome. Drawing his sword, he threatened to cut down any man Ooh, that would no abandon defectors. Rome in its hour of need. Punishable by death. That officer was Scipio the Younger. But soon enough, the Romans would come to call him Scipio Africanus, the hero of Rome. Oh, we still got a part three? Dude, this series, how long is this, this is going to take years? All right, final thoughts. All right, this episode blew my mind. There was so much to that. Such so good, or such uh, good storytelling here by oversimplified too. Like incredible there. So again, I'm just like so impressed with the Carthaginians here and Hannibal, what they're about to accomplish. And again, this is in the Roman heartland, right? They conquered the north. They conquered the south, right? Just think if this continued to be successful, what what happened? Think about what happens to history. This is before the Roman Empire that we know. What if that never existed or never got to that point? We have a Carthage. We're talking about Carthage, right? Everybody mimicking Carthage now. Everybody mimics the Romans, right? Every civilization. People are still doing it today, right? What if it was Carthage? Man, what a different time period. So I'm excited to see part three and to see where this thing's going to turn out uh, or turn around. But uh, what an impressive feat thus far. All right, everybody. Again, <laughs> Sorry, I got a little bit choked up with just kind of so many waves of emotions because I, when I saw that uh, little, just like my name in a video, it brought back just like so many memories of these past, you know, three years that my, my channel's been up and uh, all the changes that have happened in my life as a result of it. And just to come back and see that kind of come full circle was, was kind of humbling there. So thanks again for Oversimplified for doing that and supporting what I do and of course, you know, my channel very much got a big, you know, it kind of was built upon this. And they were so cool from the beginning of, you know, having a history teacher come and, and, and not just, you know, allowing me to do it, but like, you know, appreciating it. Because I, you know, know that they've pre before I before I knew about this, I know that they um, like appreciated and, and like respected what I do. And I that's such a, it says a lot for their character. So anyway, thanks again for everybody. I have no idea when part three is coming out. Obviously, I'm going to cover that. I don't know if we're going to be waiting months and months for that, probably because they put out two episodes here. So anyway, you know, I'm excited for that. And with that, you guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.